Okay, we're making this video. The flat earth movement is a very serious subject and frankly risky for me to even make a video about considering YouTube is discouraging any kind of conspiratorial content online, but it has to be talked about. Now, a couple weeks ago, I saw a trailer for a documentary called Behind the Curve, which is a documentary that is talking about the subculture of people who believe in the flat earth theory. At first I thought, who would make this film? It just seems absolutely ridiculous, but my eyes have been opened. I watched the film and frankly, it's one of the best space documentaries I've seen in years. So I sat down with the filmmakers to talk about their motivations and what they hope this film will achieve. I hope you enjoy. You guys are the creators of Behind the Curve, the film. When I saw the trailer, my brain kind of broke for a second because I was like, why would somebody make such a film? That's honestly my ignorance uh, speaking there because I just never really expected that it was some a, a bigger story to be told. And uh, before we get into the interview here, I'd love for you guys to each just introduce yourselves, what your role was in the film, and if you are a flat earther. I'm Daniel Clark, director, producer, and none of us are flat earthers. <laughs> uh, I am uh, Nick Andert. I am the uh, editor and also a producer. Uh, again, not a flat earther. <laughs> I'm Caroline Clark, and I am a producer as well. And I would like to give Nick credit, uh, credit where credit's due, that he came up with the idea as well. So it's really great, and honestly, and uh, I'm I'm not fluffing this up by any means. You know, I, I take a very critical eye of films. This might be one of the most important space films that have come out in like the last several years um just because we're really opening up our eyes to a whole other corner of the quote-unquote space like universe here my next question for you guys is uh why a movie about flat earth i and i think these two as well just sort of thought it was kind of an elaborate joke kind of like people didn't actually think this said People were pretending to actually believe the earth was flat and maybe there are like three or four of them some sort of but... troll yeah. exactly yeah trolling there was some Reddit thread where people were constantly speaking up and being like, oh, I have a cousin who's a flat earther. I have a coworker who's a flat earther. And it kind of shocked me. And I was like, wait a minute. This is actually a real phenomenon. People actually believe this unironically. And I got really sort of fascinated by that and how that could, how that could be true. It was a sort of topic that could lead to a discussion of a lot of other really interesting things. Yeah, and from the start, we knew we didn't want to make the movie about whether or not the earth was flat it was it was more of why do people think it's flat or why are they continuing to believe it's some sort of big conspiracy that's being kept from us we're we're very interested in the people in the movement as well as this the psychological process behind why people believe stuff like this now you've, you guys spent clearly a lot of time uh with these people in lots of different locations what did you learn about these people by the end of production these people are very rational normal people who live very functional daily lives they're not going around for the most part most of them are going around all day thinking about the earth being flat it's kind of just who they are and what their core belief is they're people you know and they're very functional and a lot of them are very intelligent and that was surprising at first, I think. I think when you hear about flat earthers, you kind of want to put them in a box that's like different from you um, if you don't believe the earth is flat. And so it was kind of an awakening of realizing that these people are not that different from you. They can be very educated. They can be very literate. Uh, it turns out the biggest predictor of whether or not somebody believes in flat earth is whether or not they have bought into the conspiratorial way of thinking like en masse. Because to get to believing the earth is flat, you have to have accepted such a wide range of conspiracies. Your mind has to be in a place where you can be open to this concept in the first place. Only through sort of diving deep down the conspiracy rabbit hole do you, is, is it even possible to get to that place. Was it hard to convince the talent up front to do this project with you? No, Mark, we, his number's available, and I think we emailed and called him, and right away he was willing to talk to us. I mean, he said, if you're willing to come up here and talk to me, I'll... I'll spend time with you. But Mark, immediately, I think after the first couple hours, I realized I was very much sure that we were going to have uh, a good project on our hands. The other people kind of came because of Mark, because Mark trusted us and we met him and he knew us and uh, he vouched for us for a lot of other flat earthers. Some were still hesitant until further down the road and they eventually let us in. Um, and they knew we weren't flat earthers. We never tried to pretend like we were because that would have been a bad approach. Uh, Dishonesty is not ideal. It's not great. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. They didn't expect it to be pro-flat earth necessarily, 
but I think some of them were disappointed when it wasn't. I do want to give kudos to you guys about just showing these, the, the main characters especially, but generally the community is just normal people. It never made me once question that these people were bad people. They're, they're all good people, and they, ju we, they we just have a fundamental disagreement about how the world and universe and everything work. When you start one of these projects, it's kind of hard to see where the narrative is going to go. Uh, it depends on what you shoot, what bites you get and everything. But I'd really like to hear what each and every one of you were hoping to achieve with this film. Uh, I made a film about uh, Sandy Hook truthers a few years ago, and um, with that project, I really learned what uh, conspiracy theorists could look like and how they were different from um, how I perceived them to be based on their internet profile, just kind of like you said earlier. Um, so with making this film, I was hoping to again reach reach audiences and um, who are not conspiracy theorists and maybe change their mind about um, what a conspiracy theorist looks like and acts like. I would say I, I was really interested particularly in delving into the concept of belief and why we believe certain things. We all believe things that might not be particularly rational or logical and it's tough to sort of confront yourself with that fact, with your own sort of illogicality with your beliefs. I, I think by exploring a belief system that most people would say is irrational, it allowed us to sort of delve into like the, the concept of belief in a way that we could like sort of expose some of the really interesting underpinnings of it, and then we could apply that back to things that we believe. We really wanted to use Flat Earth as an example of something that is so extreme that it doesn't matter if you're what political ideology you have, basically it doesn't matter what religion you are, it's something that most everyone can look at and say, well that's provably false, but these people still believe it. And then really pull that back to lesser degrees of uh, absolute true or false, and say like, well these two ideologies hate each other and think that they're absolutely wrong, that each of them thinks they're 100% right, there's gray area there, and, and taking the idea of flat earth and applying that back to everybody's internal beliefs was really important to me. Well, when I was researching just to do this interview with you guys, and I tried watching a lot of the Flat Earth videos, I got a lot of anxiety. I think one of the big things that I need to learn for myself is how to talk to these people so that we can find common ground and common understanding of how the world works and then have constructive conversations with them. How can the space community do a better job communicating with flat earthers so that we can find a more common ground. We interview a psychologist in the film, um, his name is Per Espen, and he talks about that you shouldn't come into the conversation with the goal of changing each other's mind, and I think that's how a lot of times we both, like a flat earther and a non-flat earther, would come into a conversation is you're trying to persuade the other person um, that your belief is correct, and when you do that you're already positioning yourself um, kind of like an offense defense sort of thing where you have you have your points that you're bringing up in the back of your mind uh, To sh you know say at the other person and you're not truly listening to each other So Per Espen encourages you to explore things together versus trying to convince each other who is right I think that they some of these people just really want someone who is listening to them and is considering what their beliefs are by the mere fact that they have such a negative perspective on how the globe works, you're fighting an uphill battle from the start. So just by listening to them, you may just break down some barriers right at the get-go to find some common ground. It's almost like, you know, the, the old rule with, you know, having dinner with family is don't bring up religion and politics. And I really hope we don't have to get to a point where you don't bring up religion, politics, and flat earth. The story or even the rhetoric that the your film had is an important perspective. We care about this subject so much because we just care about people in general and we know what disinformation can do to a society and can do to culture. So it's important to have these conversations and, and it's important to fight back these kind of ideologies, but it's really important to just respect and hear people who have different opinions. Even if, let's say, you, you're never able to change a flat earther's mind, it's important to make sure that you yourself don't become that for some other topic. Even if it's something much less radical or extreme than Flat Earth, because we're all very susceptible to disinformation, to illogical ways of thinking. And I think the more that we can be aware of those sort of pitfalls, the better off we'll all be.
We recently spoke with Ashley Landrum, who's a psychologist, and she said that these sorts of ways of thinking are not unique to conspiracy theorists. It's a human condition. And so I, I just think realizing that it's not an us versus them thing, it's, it's how we all think, is really important too. Yeah. This film ended up being a lot deeper than I was expecting. There were several moments of the film that were disturbing yet enlightening for me. Uh, one of them being when this woman said that she has made herself, her daughter, and her grandchildren all flat earthers. When you hear those kinds of statements, like what goes through your mind? I was as shocked as you were when I heard that for the first time. I was the one who was not in the room for that, but when that footage came back, I think it was pretty clear that that was, like we ended up making that more of a climactic moment than we expected to because it was sort of a way to express the consequences of this in a way we hadn't considered before. The internet sort of enabled confirmation bias to a degree that just would never have existed in the past. You know, in the past, let's say if you're Jeff from some village and you have this belief that the earth might be flat, good chance that everyone around you is gonna disabuse you of that notion. You're not gonna find anyone who agrees with you and you'll come to accept the general consensus on it. Now, if you come up with one of these notions, it's very easy to find people who agree with you, and it's very easy to only listen to them. That confirmation bias, that ability to find people who share your unusual beliefs, never existed even close to the same degree that it does now with the internet before. Yeah, I mean, we could definitely make the assumption that these communities existed before the internet, but the internet just, it was like just throwing gasoline on a fire you know, and it's not just with Flat Earth, it's with conspiracy theories in general. You know, yes, that is a negative side of the internet, but I would say that the it's the internet has brought so much more better education that it's worth us coping with this. I'm sure you guys have learned through this project about some celebrities who kind of uh, subscribe to the Flat Earth theory. Do you think that other celebrities and other people who have platforms have the responsibility to counter this rhetoric that they put out? It's tough to say they have a responsibility. Sure. But the NBA made a big joke of it. Uh, like a lot of commentators would, would joke about Kyrie Irving and then Shaq was kind of trolling people for a while. Pretty sure he was trolling and having yeah, fun with Shaq it. Actually... And I think that kind of behavior doesn't help stop it from growing because people who are flat earthers are going to look to this celebrity as some sort of authority and the same thing happens with like vaccinations when a celebrity sits there and says well this is what i know people look at celebrities whether they have any authority or not as an authority because they're successful so they must be doing something right and uh, they look at them as proof when you're a celebrity and you use your platform to spread that misinformation, that's massively irresponsible. And I think a lot of celebrities need to consider the power of their platform better than they have been. I want to thank the filmmakers for coming on my show and talking about Behind the Curve. I highly recommend the film. You can find it on Netflix, iTunes, Amazon Prime, and wherever your digital streaming videos are sold. I also am wearing this shirt by Michael from sfsf.space. Uh, he makes a lot of cool shirts and all the proceeds from the link below that would usually go in my pocket are actually gonna go into the pockets of the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, which is a nonprofit. I'm just, uh, you know, trying to support the troops. I hope you liked the video. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.